To be a Marriott ambassador, one needs to spend 100 nights and $23,000 in one year. And I did it for six years in a row. Uh, 100 nights might not seem like a lot, but considering there are 250 business days in a calendar year, uh, you're essentially spending 40% of your life with Marriott. And after six years, $120,000, uh, 600 nights, and 40% of my life, I quit. What did Marriott do? Were they vengeful? Were they remorseful? Will I ever go back? And are rewards programs even worth it anymore? Uh, I'm going to touch on all of that, but before I get into it, I want to talk about why I originally partnered with Marriott, um, the best parts of being an ambassador, uh, when I started to notice the program deteriorating, and why I ultimately left. I was actually originally a Hilton person. I didn't do any research, and I just thought that Hilton was the best hotel brand out there, the best program. And after a couple years of being with Hilton, I started to notice they were really weak in middle America and in rural areas. So I did more research and I actually found out that Marriott was the bigger company. They had more hotel brands, more locations, and a much bigger international footprint. And I decided to switch my business after I did my research and I was actually really excited because for my business I could stay in courtyards, Spring Hill Suites, residence inns, but then also have access to Ritz Carlton, JW Marriott, and autograph collection hotels. So in terms of size, Marriott was number one, Hilton was number two, and Starwood was number three. And right as I was transitioning over to Marriott, they merged or bought Starwood. So number one, merge with number three, making them even bigger and better. And not only that, I got access to all the Starwood hotels. So St. Regis Properties, W Properties, Luxury Collection Hotels, they all joined Marriott and I was all in. And for the first couple years, it was amazing. You can view all the official benefits of being a Marriott ambassador online. I'm going to tell you what was really important to me, what kept me in the program. First of all, were the upgrades. They were bountiful and they were substantial. I got upgraded pretty much every single time. If I walked into a hotel and did not get upgraded, I was shocked. That's how common they were. And there were meaningful upgrades, like incredible upgrades. Presidential suites, governor suites, villas. Uh, also, another big thing for me was the late checkout for ambassadors. It's 4 p.m. That is so pivotal because that's almost an extra business day. So if I get a delayed flight or need to make a follow-up meeting or make some friends and want to stay in the city a little bit longer, whatever the case, I now could stay for pretty much the entire business day the next day with a 4 p.m. checkout. So that was really, really critical. And another vital factor that kept me in the program for a long time were the points that actually had value. Uh, when you're at the top of any program, the points are gonna accumulate quickly, but it doesn't matter how quickly they accumulate or how many you have if they aren't worth something. And it actually had value at Marriott for the first few years. You could book a top hotel in the world. I'm talking Bora Bora, Maldives, Paris, Caribbean, Cosmopolitan Las Vegas wraparound suite. You could book a week there for a couple hundred thousand points. And then lastly, this one's kind of off the record. It was unofficial, but the customer service was world class. Uh, you were assigned a personal Marriott ambassador, a one-on-one -on -one contact who would work with you throughout the year. Uh, you would get personal greetings from the general manager, uh, written letters of thanks, chocolates, fruit baskets, literally last second cancellations with full refunds, not a problem. I literally felt taken care of and part of the family. But before the pandemic, before, not during, not after, but before the pandemic, I started to notice things rapidly declining. First of all, the upgrades stopped. At first, they were capped at junior suites, then they just turned into corner rooms, and then high floors. But the governor suites, the presidential suites, the baller rooms, the villas, they were gone. And then late checkout became problematic. Uh, no longer were they guaranteed, it was just a priority request. So you were at the top of the request for a late checkout, but they were no longer certain. Um, they became negotiated. All of a sudden, 4 p.m. turned into 2 p.m., 2 p.m. turned into 1 p.m., 1 p.m. turned into noon, and then sometimes they were gone altogether. They would just simply say, we're booked up for the night and we cannot grant it. And then the points redemption changed significantly, like substantially. And I won't bore you with the nuances, but they used to be based off the price of the hotel, meaning if you wanted to go to a really nice hotel during the week, or during the off season, or if you found a really good time of year to go, the points would reflect that. But they moved the hotels to a category-based system, meaning if you wanna stay at a W, if you wanna stay at a St. Regis, a Ritz-Carlton, an autograph collection hotel, those were gonna be a certain level of points no matter what. 
And basically what that meant is that overnight, the points were basically halved. So a week's stay at a really phenomenal hotel was 200,000 points, and now overnight, it's 350 to 400,000. It basically halved the points, and it was a big blow because if the points aren't worth anything, then really what's the point of staying in the program? And that elite customer service, it evaporated. My personal contact uh, was replaced by a group email. I never talked to the same person twice, not even on the same request. Uh, also, the chocolates, the fruit baskets, the personal greetings, they were gone. Uh, the little under the table favors, such as last minute cancellations with refunds, those were no longer granted. And I just felt like pedestrian, like I wasn't even appreciated or respected. So I quit. I left. I left uh, last year and I spent nine nights with Marriott. I went from spending 100 nights to nine. I think instead of $23,000, I think it was less than two or three. It wasn't much at all. And what did Marriott do? Um, I'm actually really, really shocked. I can't believe it. Uh, they extended me titanium elite status for this year. Uh, and that is actually really meaningful. Now, I don't think anyone there personally said, hey, look, we miss James. Uh, he left us. Let's get him back. Let's extend him titanium elite. I think it was generated by the system automatically. I think the algorithm did its thing and realized that I spent 600 nights over six years and then one year there was a huge drop off and they probably saw something was up. But nonetheless, I still really appreciate the gesture. Like Titanium Elite is worth easily three, four, five thousand dollars a year. It's basically a three, four, five thousand dollar gift. So it definitely meant a lot to me. And even though I've only spent 15 nights this year with Marriott, the upgrades have come back. They've come back quite noticeably. I've been upgraded when I stayed for business and this room right here is the director's suite uh, it is a thousand dollars a night and I just booked the basic room and they upgraded me to this so um, Would I go back? I I don't know. Uh, it's gonna take more than just one random upgrade I'm gonna need to see Marriott go back to the way things used to be or at least some semblance of how they used to be um, I think the worst thing about the entire thing is that they just diluted the program They sanitized it behind the scenes. It was really murky and it was really secretive and sneaky. It's not like they came out and transparently said, hey, look, we need you to spend more money to us for us to extend the value of the program to you. Now you need to spend 130 nights a year or 25 or $30,000. If they would have been transparent with it, I would actually consider it. But they knew 100 nights a year was already crazy and they knew $23,000 a year was already crazy. And whether it was profiteering or cost cutting or whatever you wanna call it, uh, instead of adding value to the program or asking us to give them more revenue, they just sneakily and secretively cut the perks and benefits. And that really, really hurts. Now, Marriott is not the only company to cut the perks of their loyalty program. You unfortunately see this across the entire spectrum with Delta, MGM, all the car rental companies. But the chickens have come home to roost a little bit as customers start speaking with their wallets and purses. Uh, just recently, I saw the Delta CEO go on record just the other day on national TV and he publicly stated that he and the company went too far in cutting SkyMiles perks. And starting next year, they're actually gonna start reinstating them to get customers back and to start adding value to the program. And I don't think Delta is the only company who is experiencing pressure. I think they're just one of the few who are open, honest, and transparent enough to admit it. But if I had to guess, I'd say that Marriott is feeling the pressure as well. Uh, let me know if you are a Marriott person if you think the program has degraded over the years, if you still think being titanium or ambassador is worth it, and let me know if you still think there is a remaining loyalty program out there that's worthwhile. I'm not necessarily sure that there is.